Welcome back to the Matt VidPro AI YouTube channel. Today I have an AI news roundup. There have been some really cool advancements and new things coming out. And well, you guys just gotta see them for yourself. So first up here, Anthropic releases Claude Pro. So if you guys didn't already know, Claude is essentially Anthropic's chat GPT competitor. And actually it's really quite good before you could just use Claude 2 for entirely free. And it hovers in the quality department somewhere in between GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 when directly comparing it to chat GPT. However, the kicker with Claude 2 when it originally released was the fact that it has an 100k context window or about 75,000 words. So you could paste research papers into it, you could paste small books into it, entire Wikipedia articles, and it could just handle a lot more text than GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. As a comparison, free chat GPT is about 4,000 words of context and GPT 4 is about 8,000 words of context. But now they've got Claude Pro, which is honestly kind of surprising and shocking for them to announce, considering I really would not use Claude 2 if it isn't free. Thankfully, they still have a free version of Claude 2. So this is only available in the US and UK at the moment. And essentially what you get with Claude Pro for 20 bucks US a month or 18 pounds UK, you get five times more usage of that latest model Claude 2. It's a good model, but I don't know if it's worth it for 20 bucks a month for five times more usage. I guess if you're doing a large amount of data digestion, maybe, maybe it would be worth it because of that 100k context window. You're also getting priority access to Claude AI during high traffic periods, something you also get with ChatGPT Plus, and early access to new features. So does this mean that we're getting Claude plugins in the future? I don't know. Maybe they'll have something like Code Interpreter, or now it's actually been renamed to Data Analysis inside of ChatGPT Plus. But yeah, they're promising new features apparently in that Claude AI app, and I never really thought of Claude AI, that little web app, being a Anthropic's strong point here. I always thought that it was that core model being able to digest 100k tokens, but we'll see if a lot of people jump on this. Maybe they're just trying to get a little bit of extra money. To be honest, I'm just happy to see that the regular free version of Claude 2 is still very much accessible, and it's good to see that they're just not locking down the whole model and making it fully paid because that would really stink. Now, in other AI large language news, the biggest and best open source large language model to date has been released, and it's Falcon 180B. Yes, that is the parameter count for the model, 180 billion. Let's put that in perspective real quick. GPT 3.5, which is the base model, not the pro version of chat GPT, is about 175 billion parameters, so this model tops out at about the same size as GPT 3.5, and it's fully open source, which is awesome. This means that you can modify the model and redistribute it and make changes to it, whereas GPT 3.5 is locked down. Developers can't do anything with it, really. As you can see, Matt Schumer talks about this on Twitter. Falcon 180B has been released, trained on four times the compute of Llama 270B, which is the previous record holder for the best open source AI large language model to date, and the quality of Falcon 180B sits in between GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. So this thing can be expected to be about as good as Claude 2, which is really awesome. However, you know, varying degrees of quality here. You might get some answers that are way better than GPT 3.5 or way worse than GPT 3.5. And same kind of goes with GPT 4, although I can bet that GPT 4 is going to be a little bit better pretty much every time than this model. However, again, GPT 4, GPT 3.5, not open source, Falcon 180B totally is. As Matt Schumer no doubt points out here on Twitter, we're now less than two months away from GPT 4 level open source models because people are going to modify Falcon 180B, they're going to make it more capable. That's what happens when you have these open source developments. The same thing happened with Llama 2. People immediately modified it and turned it into a better version of that same large language model because of that open source capability. There are two models here, a base model that you would need to fine tune yourself to make use of it. You could fine tune it for coding, 
for example, or you could fine tune it for completion, but they actually created a fine tuned chat model for people to mess around with. And you can do that on the Falcon chat demo space. This is all going to be linked down in the description below. So yeah, you can actually use this thing and test it out for completely free on that little Falcon demo. Of course, state of the art results. This thing is one of the best large language models we've seen come out to date. Here we've got some little comparisons. This is the original Google Palm. Palm too small, you can see is even less than the original Palm, but it's the smaller version of the model. Medium is about the same as the original Palm. Palm too large is the best model in this test at a little over 80%. And Falcon 180B is at about 80%, so it's pretty much as good as Palm 2. In comparison to the openly released pre-trained large language models, Falcon takes the cake as the best one on the current leaderboards, getting a slightly better score than Llama 2 with quite a lot more parameters, interestingly enough, and a lot more pre-training. So under the hood, Llama 2 might be a little bit more efficient. Again, Llama 2 is developed by Meta AI and they've got plenty of resources. One limitation with this demo is that it's only a thousand words and then you have to clear it and reset it. So it's not exactly useful like chat GPT, for example, this is kind of just a small demo, but you could in theory run this at home. And I'm actually going to show you a really cool example of it running at home. Keep in mind, this is about as good as GPT 3.5 or Google's Palm. And here we can see it's casually running on a Mac M2 Ultra. This is crazy. Just running on a little Mac, a whole GPT 3.5. Typically, these language models have to run on GPU servers, but here it is on a Mac. So thanks to Georgie over here for showing this off. Some catches here, though. It is a, about 100 gigabytes disk size, but the generation speed honestly seems to be pretty quick for this. The TLDR or the main point about this whole open source large language model thing though is that big companies, OpenAI, Google, Microsoft, they're kind of in trouble when it comes to AI development. They are definitely making huge strides and still creating the best models we see to date, but not for long. The open source community is really taking things by storm and elevating their game better and better. They're actually evolving faster than the main leaders in the technology that we see today. At some point in the future, we can expect open source to kind of dominate the AI landscape, I think, in a pretty huge way, which is great because everyone is going to get access to AI that is not really controlled by a private corporation or something like that. It's all going to be free and open to download and use and improve the lives with, which is really what we want to see AI do, right? We want to see AI improve the lives of the people that get access to it. The thing with open source AI models is that uh, safety is always a concern because anyone can download these things and modify them for their own purposes. To prevent this, the creators of Falcon 180B have made it quite limited. So if you want to host this thing on a website, for example, you have to go through Falcon in terms of getting approval to actually do that. It's not like you have to use their own API or anything, but you know, if you're going to modify it, if you're going to host it yourself, you need to essentially to go get their approval first and you have to follow their terms of use. So it's a, a kind of a limited license, but it's still open source. And I really think that they're doing that primarily for safety concerns because it's a pretty powerful model. In other news, it looks like pretty soon you might be able to watch any content in any language in the original voice and with perfect lip syncing. This is insane technology. Sorry if I'm butchering this name, but Joshua Zhu here on Twitter, founder at Hey Gen Official, which is actually a company I have worked with before to do sponsored content. They are leaders in terms of AI avatars for business. They've been working on a new AI feature to help creators and businesses translate their videos as simply as possible. Three steps, upload a video, choose your language, submit. Don't be surprised if at some point in the future you see an advertisement for this technology on my channel because this is amazing stuff. They show off some examples here. MKBHD, famous tech YouTuber, Elon Musk, no words needed. Casey Neistat, another famous YouTuber, and then Emma Chamberlain, yet another famous YouTuber. The crazy part about this is the fact that it's a perfect voice clone in another language that's not the original language they're speaking, and the lip syncing is perfect. It, it is phenomenal. Just take a look for yourself. Muchos datos y encontrar patrones que los humanos no podrían, como detectar enfermos en morceau de crâne, le remplacer y placer el dispositivo. Grande cantidad de vino. Me capisci bene, vero? 
intendo dire che ho bevuto tanta. Agar mujhe ishara karna ho to main yahan dekh sakta hu ya dekhna aur anuman. And I know it's just a short little demo, nothing too long, only 18 seconds, but that 18 seconds is showing a lot. We've got four different voices, they're all cloned fairly well. It's not the 11 Labs level of voice cloning that you typically see, but the lip syncing is really the most impressive part. It's just the raw video clip. They don't have to do any specialization or anything like that. They're replacing the mouth, the same exact mouth of the original user with a fully lip synced version in a separate language. Like you could watch this content as if it was spoken and produced in your own native language and making it more accessible across the whole world. I love stuff like this. The crazy part is it translates the original video in minutes. It does fully accurate lip syncs and matches the voice clones. This is something that if you make an account with HeyGen, you can just use and try out right now. John Finger, which is a fantastic AI account, by the way, I would suggest following him on Twitter as well as me. I always repost great stuff on Twitter. Essentially what this tweet is, is it's a reply to something Runway ML is releasing soon for their video generation software. As we know, Runway ML is a leader in the AI video generation space, which has been evolving pretty rapidly this summer. Anyways, he speculates here that text guided image to video is coming soon, meaning you can upload an image and say, I want it to move in this way and then click enter and it's going to generate a video based off of your text and your image. Anyways, let's take a look at the original tweet here and the original video. I'm going to mute the audio for this simply because Runway ML is known to use copyrighted music and I don't want to get uh, a copyright strike. You can see we open here with a nice beautiful field, some clouds moving, some clothes blowing in the wind. Really phenomenal AI video generations. These are no doubt cherry picked or hand picked, but it's still really impressive what this technology can get up to. And Runway ML has been a leader, an absolute leader in this detailed snail shell. It's pretty awesome stuff. And then we go to this clock and I want to point this out. This is how you can tell, by the way, that this is based off of an original image because it actually has accurate numbers on this clock, which means it was a real photo of a clock. We all know how much AI struggles to create images that have numbers that actually make sense, but this is still really awesome. Imagine bringing your old memories to life by uploading old photos and having them converted into new videos just by you typing out what was happening at the time you took the photo or something like that. You could create whole movies based off of just photos. Really amazing. Nice lighthouse here. But yes, these are the kind of upgrades that we expect to see from text to video in the future. And yeah, this is a field of AI that has been evolving a little bit slower than the image generation space, but strides are still being made as we can see here. Steam, which is the largest video game market to date globally, still bans games for having any implementation of AI at all, whether it be AI art or chat GPT or large language models. This is a really sad story of a developer who poured his whole life into this game just to have Steam remove it for containing AI. It had an optional chat GPT mod in the playtest build. It would replace the dialogue of the NPCs in the game, which is a pretty wholesome, normal use to have inside of a video game. I mean, that's really the main thing here. I don't think there's anything wrong with having your NPCs be based off of AI. That is a huge step for video gaming and uh, immersiveness in games. Anyways, he submitted his game to early access. Steam decided it needed additional review and then they essentially banned it. It's pretty insane that Steam bans games and apps just because they have AI. However, I can guarantee you this is going to change in the future because it's going to be commonplace. Every single modern AAA game in the future is going to use AI because it's going to make NPCs and game worlds that much more realistic and immersive. We saw this with InWorld's Origins demo, which for some reason is still allowed on Steam. I don't know why, but that demo is entirely based around AI and is still allowed on Steam. So any devs that have any kind of large language model implementation should contact Steam about that saying, hey, these guys can have AI, but we can't. This doesn't make sense. I don't know. Steam is not really enforcing their policies fairly across their platform, clearly. And it's just a dumb rule to have AI banned. It makes no sense. I get that they're scared of lawsuits and copyright and stuff, but the best games in the future are going to use the cutting edge AI technology. I can promise you that. Rowan Chung, which might be one of the best Twitter accounts to follow for AI news, brings to us that Microsoft 
just announced collaboration with Page to build the largest image-based AI model for cancer detection. So yeah, if you guys didn't know, AI is definitely being developed for the health sector and it does amazing things. The model, for example, is training on an unprecedented volume of data, digesting billions of images to identify both common and rare cancers. That company page already owns AI that assists pathologists in detecting breast, colon, and prostate cancers. And this initiative just basically aims to boost speed and accuracy for overloaded medical staff. That is a huge problem in the healthcare industry. So it's nice to see that they're trying to alleviate some of that. And they want to emphasize here that this is a tool for doctors not a replacement. I can't agree with that enough. I think that these companies are also smart enough to know that AI is not even close to being able to replace what a doctor can do. We say it all the time, but AI is a game changer. It's going to change everything about your life. That's essentially a little rundown of what's going on in the world of AI. I can't cover everything, so if you truly want to stay up to date and see everything, I suggest you follow me on Twitter and join the Discord server, really. The Discord server is amazing. We, we get new stuff in there all the time. It's just the best. If you're a regular viewer, especially if you're making it to the end of the video, please just subscribe if you aren't already. It means the world to me, helps the channel out a lot, and it's completely free for you to do. So I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and goodbye.